Welcome to the Orthodontics and Summary Podcast, where Farouk brings you the key points and understanding of orthodontic webinars, conferences, and papers in a concise podcast with your host, Farouk Ahmed. Hello and welcome. This episode of Orthodontics in Summary looks at Sergio Sambatado's lecture entitled The Treatment of Class 2 in the Permanent Dentition, the Bioprogressive Approach. Sergio started off by describing Ricketts' understanding of the class 2 case. He described how the upper permanent molars are less erupted and the lower permanent molars are more erupted. And that formed a key part of Ricketts' understanding of the class 2 case and also the bioprogressive technique. Sato's paper in 2008, which is in the references, also showed this. So, the occlusal plane in the class 2 case, has a higher posterior plane and lower anteriorly. And that features as a key objective in the bioprogressive technique. The aim is to lower the upper posterior occlusal plane, thus allowing something to take place, which is termed the unlocking of the occlusion. So what is this unlocking? Sergio went on to describe the unlocking relating to the decompression theory. The idea that the interarticular space at the condyle is increased. The distance between the cartilage and the bones. And this allows growth to take place. This is underpinned by the idea that the condyle is a growth center adaptive to its surroundings. So if the condyle is decompressed, growth takes place vertically. The condyle itself will express this by growing upwards and forwards. But there will be changes in the body of the mandible as well. So the posterior mandible will grow. We get an increase in posterior face height. But anterior of the mandible, for example, pagonian, will move forwards. And this is due to the L shape of the mandible itself. The accumulation of this growth means that the mandible rotates in a counterclockwise or forwards direction. He also mentioned about compression that takes place at the condyle and how it restricts growth. The interarticular space is narrow. The cartilage is, in, is encapsulated in the bone and therefore limited growth happens. The condyle may grow slightly backwards, but the mandible will also grow backwards as well. Now this was based upon Ricketts' reinterpretation of Bjork's classic study. How does this relate then to treatment mechanics for bioprogressive technique? Well, the aim is to extrude the upper permanent molars. and That relates to the etiology as we've described. This results in decompression of the condyle. Further vertical growth takes place in a compensatory direction. The mandible will carry on growing anteriorly until there's an occlusal interference, and that will stop this growth taking place. So the idea of correcting the overbite prior to this compensatory or unlocking occurring is key to the bioprogressive ideas. Next, Sergio went on to describe two cases. The first case was a straightforward bioprogressive technique case involving a utility arch in both upper and lower arches. Now the utility arch intruded the upper anterior teeth, consequently the upper posterior teeth extruded. Now this was left in place for a year whilst that unlocking or growth took place. The second case was a more interesting case involving distalization. In this case, it involved the, a tip back bend in the upper utility arch. This allowed the upper molars to be distally tipped. And the second component to it was activation of the utility arch. And this was interesting. So rather than having a straight bend mesial to the upper first molar and distal to the upper lateral incisor, the wire was bent in an obtuse angle. When it was inserted, the wires compressed together, activating it. And as the wire then expressed itself and the wire returned to being obtuse, it would distalize the upper first molar. This would also result in the anterior teeth also being advanced. Now, the way that that was countered was through using class 2 elastics, which meant all of the force was resulting in distalization of the upper first permanent molar. Now, what would Sergio use to do this? Well, he would use his gauge, the San Bataro gauge, which standardizes the elastic force, and he'd use 135 grams. He would also use a 16 by 16 algeloy wire. Now his key, his key lasting message was that the diagnosis was the key, and he accounted for 75% of orthodontic treatment. 
unlocking counter for 20%, and only 5% were mechanics. And he was key to draw people's eyes away from the mechanics themselves and to focus on the diagnosis and the unlocking of the occlusion. That's it for another episode. Please stay tuned to the next one.